All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Or good night. Uh, all right. You are ready. Great. Well, I hope I am. I have been preparing. Uh, which is going to uh, mean that I will probably screw up more. Tends to be uh, useful to uh, be uh, slightly underprepared. Um, but I've done some done some thinking and uh, some research since last practice round, and um, I think I was mostly on to uh, my work on uh, flying the um, uh, three point landings. But today I will work on my wheel landings because they are the most difficult because they will. Uh, um, <clears throat> probably for one um, make me bounce more and uh, much more likely that the tail will start be start uh, wobbling around and um, one of the many many quirks of uh, tailwheel flying is the fact that uh, there's the uh, gyroscopic effect of the propeller so when it's flat, or when it's uh, when when the tail is up, and the the propeller is uh, kind of yeah flat, uh, that's one thing. But when you lower the tail, the propeller will change um, angle, uh, which in the gyroscopic effect will make the plane turn to the right for once. So when you're landing, uh, all else all everything else being equal, uh, the plane will have a slight right turning to the tendency. Um, but, and the problem with many uh, tailwheel uh, takeoffs for many people is that uh, all the left turning tendencies of these planes are, uh, yeah, all the tendencies are to the left when taking off, even the gyroscopic effect. So when you're uh, raising the uh, nose and the propeller gets to be uh, flat uh, it's gonna get even worse so um, that's one of the benefits of doing a three-point landing is that you don't have to deal with that change when you're plopping down but when you're landing on the main wheels and then the tail comes down then you have to deal with that um, and there was one other factor that I really hadn't appreciated and uh, which uh, CG, you will appreciate uh, flying tail draggers a lot, um, and this is kind of kind of interesting. The, the center of gravity, you know, let's just say that it is uh, somewhere around the uh, belly tank here. If the vector of that is, let's look at the plane from above here. Uh, if the vector of the uh, uh, center of gravity goes from here and somewhere it's ideally it should go straight through the uh, nose of the plane like this uh, if everything else is equal you should be going straight if it's slightly right or left you can adjust it but if it's outside of the wheel if the vector goes at the wheel or outside then you're out. Then there's no uh, no recovering. Then that that's the ground loop right there. But one thing I just realized today is that the tail wheel, when you're on the ground, if that one, the vector of the tail wheel is outside of there, outside of the tire, if that one, if the plane is sufficiently uh, already left turning, uh, that the uh, um, tail wheel is on its way that direction. You can still save it. Uh, it's not uh, the ground loop is not uh, inevitable at that point. But using the brakes on this side to combat that will make the will push the uh, tail even f uh, further. If the uh, vector of the tail wheel is towards the wheel, it may might just not be any uh, effect. But if the tail wheel is on its way that direction, in terms of where the airplane is going, um, 
then you might be onto something with using the brakes. But if the, if you are actually on on your way out, um, using uh, if your the tail is if you're that crooked, uh, using the brakes will actually make it worse. Uh, and I've experienced this a million times, and I hadn't understand stood why. I was thinking I'm I'm screaming on the brakes here, and nothing is happening. It's or it's given worse, even 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 worse. And here's another thing that I didn't realize that uh, Explain would be able to model. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic, uh, and it has saved so many landings for me afterwards. Um, when you're landing. Uh, if you're having, um, if you're on your way, let's say you're about to, um, the, the plane wants to turn to the left for some reason when you're landing. Uh, maybe the wind is coming from the left. It's blowing on your tail, pushing the tail to the right, which makes the plane go to the left. Uh, the, uh, it's weather waning. When that happens, so one thing is, of course, you you will you will use uh, rudder. That makes sense, right? And uh, one of the things you can also do is to turn the yoke into the wind. What that does, you can already see here. On the, I'm going to take the uh, flaps up, so it's going to be easier to see here. Uh, what that does is that this aileron comes up and when that aileron comes up you see that it's more or less hidden behind the uh, um, uh, the wing so the effect of uh, the aileron coming up is not that much it doesn't really do anything it kind of uh, makes the wing even sleeker more or less on the other side However, the aileron coming down gives more lift, which is, of course, what happens when you turn to the left. The right wing will come up. But it also induces drag. It creates drag um, and something also called parasite drag, which makes this wing be more... Uh, there's more drag on the right wing, which pushes it backwards. So when you're when you're doing the right rudder, and the plane goes to the left, and that doesn't help, you could basically think, okay, I'm going to stare into the ground loop that I'm about to enter. That will add drag on this side, which will effectively push that wing back. It's a huge lever. Uh, being out here, this um, aileron. So it has a lot of effect. I, When I uh, learned about this, I thought, that's excellent for the pilots in real world where they can use the you know real life physics to do that. It couldn't possibly work in the sim. It does. Yes, it does. And uh, I'm not sure about uh, all other plants, but uh, I think this is... Uh, this is probably just due to uh, explain being explain. It's uh, sufficiently uh, hard coded into the uh, to the machinery of the sim that this is probably something that happens also in your Piper Cub, uh, the Super Cub, and um, maybe the uh, um, Stearman and other uh, tail draggers that you're flying, or, or or normal planes for that matter. But it's not as kind of important in a, a tricycle gear when you're landing because uh, the uh, center of gravity is um, between the main wheels and the nose wheel so the plane will just track straight so that effect is absolutely amazing and it's uh, really useful uh, to know about this it, it doesn't feel right because when you're landing if you're in this position and the plane wants to go to the left you push right rudder by by uh, uh, by instinct, but turning to the left when you're driving a car, that's kind of the opposite of what you want. You're turning into the turn, 
but it has the opposite effect on the ground because the um, the right wing will be pushed back, so we will be uh, squeezed slightly to the right, and that that has saved a lot of my landings uh, from doing that. Uh, so that's one of the things um, uh, that I've been uh, toying around with the last uh, last months. Um, there were uh, some other factors that I was thinking about earlier today. Uh, yes, they. Uh, um, yeah, it happens with all planes. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. So, you, so you can use that uh, when you're. Uh, uh, I mean, you're you're flying in real life, so you probably know this already. I I didn't know this. This is probably very basic knowledge. Um, yeah, Delta. That's uh, it. It is inter interesting. It's very interesting, and it's uh, it's it's uh, useful even in uh, calm winds because if you are not stable and or you do something wrong when landing. Um, that can be a way of saving it. Of course, just pushing power and going around is uh, always an option. Uh, or as um, some pilots said, that you can uh, you can give a shot of power, get kind of under control, get up. If you have room enough, you can come back and land again immediately. Just go a few feet ab ab above the ground and then uh, stabilize and then come back down. Uh, not always useful in um, in. Um, a very short field or in uh you know uh scary terrain but uh you know in a long uh, runway that i have here at oak ridge uh, i will definitely uh try you know not going around necessarily just uh you know giving myself a second try and another thing is that uh, uh if you have a crosswind they say that uh, for example at this airport let's say uh i'm looking at the uh barbecue air uh, looks like I have a crosswind from uh, from the right now, as it is, more or less ninety degrees. Uh, for takeoff, you should aim to have the wind from the right, because that um, that will push on the tail, push the tail to the left, which will make the plane go to the right, which will counteract so many of the factors that make the plane go to the left, the p factor, um, uh, which is the fact that the propeller angle, the way it's attacking the air, is different when it's coming down than it's when it's coming up. You can you cannot actually see it on the model here. Uh, that angle of the propeller is just barely um, uh, more than zero degrees. It just barely has uh, an angle of attack there, whereas this one is very coarse. Because of uh, the... Um, um, actually, wait a minute. What am I seeing here? So this a propeller turns uh, this way, as they mostly do. Wait a minute. Does it? I'm, I'm a bit confused there. But anyway, the point is that the different angles of uh, the blades will make that the center of thrust is not right in the middle. It's on the side, which will make the plane uh, also go to the left. Uh, that's a p-factor. I'm probably not very good at explaining the, those angles, but uh, um, it's a pretty interesting phenomenon. Uh, so taking off with uh, if there is a 90 degree um, crosswind, it's better to have it from the right than from the left. So when I'm going to take off now, I should be taking the uh, uh, sidewind from the, the right here, the crosswind from the right. We should be landing with the crosswind from the left, if you can, because uh, of, you know, if nothing else happens, if you land a three-point landing, there is there is no factor. But if you do... Uh, uh, wheel landing and then lower the tail, you will have the uh, gyroscopic effect of the propeller uh, being the gyroscope 
changing angle when it's kind of coming back on the tail, which will drive the plane slightly to the right, uh, which will compensate for a left uh, crosswind, which will push the tail to the right, turning the plane to the left. Um, and uh, if, as far as I could understand, uh, the um, uh, the gyroscopic uh, effect is very, very strong. So when you're taking off with a tail dragger, and the, if you take off in a three-point attitude, just lift the plane up, you will not notice it. But if you have to, or do, lift the tail, that's the point where you need even more um, uh, rudder. And, or, uh, left aileron to have drag on the right wing, which will make the plane stay at least some, somewhat stable. So there are a lot of motion going on with these planes, whereas a Cessna 172, you could just firewall and then just do it like this, and then you're off, more or less. Anyway, so three-point landings being dealt with on the last flight. I will today endeavor to make some work on these. And uh, one of the exercises I've heard that is useful, which I will try uh, after after a few tries, is to land on one wheel and try to stay on that wheel along the runway, just fly it on one wheel and then take off again. I am not sure if I'm able to do that, but I will definitely try. So let's get going. Um, it has cleared up somewhat. It was a little bit on the marginal side, the uh, visibility here, uh, but it's 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 getting there. Uh, I, can, I can actually see all the way over to uh, Aubrey Mountain here. Couldn't do that when I started uh, loading up the plane here. Uh, anyway, CG. Uh, how do you add information below, like about me and stuff? Uh, you mean on on the Twitch uh, web page? Is that where you're talking? Because I don't have any... Uh, I don't think I have anything on the stream, do I? I'll start pre-flighting while you are waking up. If I bore you to death with uh, my babbling. Flaps coming down on the page below video. Okay, uh, let me just quickly pull up the page and uh, I'll see if I can uh, show you. Let's see here. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, very non obvious. Yeah, no, nope. uh, very non obvious. Nope. Jesus, I uh, my uh, stream automatically started playing. Here it is. So you're in your channel page just the main page, and then you slide downwards, and you see all these uh, panels. You can edit them. There's this panel uh, button here, uh, which is kind of... Uh, I I'd never saw it. I had to search it up. So you click that, and then you get all of these. You can add uh, plus, and you can add panels with uh, you know images or things like that. So that's, uh, that's how you do that. And then you click it away, then it saves. So, yeah, no, I didn't see it either. So, you're not the only one. It's very, it's well hidden. Um, it kind of look, it kind of makes the page look a little bit more uh, alive and uh, fun. So, it's a nice exercise to fix it. I've uh, thanks to um, the people coming in here with uh, fuel. I've um, um, add, added fuel to the to the plane, not too much. I will save that for when I fly out of here, but uh, I've done that. And uh, the uh, dog has gotten uh, uh, food, so it's now 20 kilos, that poor dog. It was seven when I stole it, 
So it's uh, quickly growing back there. Say hi. No, it's uh, it's sleeping now, post dinner sleep. Um, so uh, anyway, okay, let's pre-flight. Just gonna click off my yoke so that it doesn't uh, interfere with the pre-flight. Walk around. I'm gonna do this so that you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, as usual, I'll set that just as a kind of absolute minimum for any instrument approach. Not that I'm gonna fly an instrument approach today, but I always do it. Oil, hey, you're all right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna save that for uh, for when I uh, when I depart. Flaps are down. That checks out. And uh, those tires are gonna get their uh, get a beating today. Tie downs. And again, I never tire of showing this off. I'm gonna center the ailerons. Ah, oh, come on. More or less like that. And then I'm gonna bring the flaps up. So for you nerds out there, okay, so I didn't get them centered. Now I can center them. That this, this is now the, cent uh, the ailerons completely centered. So this is how they, uh, uh, look when you're on level flight and flaps up. And uh, as many uh, bush planes do, when you're lowering the fla flaps, the ailerons will droop a little bit with the uh, flaps. They are interconnected, not one-to-one, -one, but to some, to some degree. Uh, probably your uh, super cab has this as well. Um, which makes that... Um, the uh, extent the ailerons will go down is whatever it is, but they won't go as far up. And another thing is that when you then check the flaps, like this, wiggle, wiggle them around, you can see on the edge of the aileron here, just give me a second here, you can see that they are connected even when doing this check. Just a lovely attention to detail. And I'm still not sure if this is explain hard coding, that's how it works, or if it's uh, the Thranda modeling of the beaver uh, that does this. I hope it is explain, because that means that uh, all, uh, um, all planes are getting the same attention to detail. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's Tranda because they are really, really good. Again, checking flaps. Pedal tube. Tie down. And then done. All right. Um... Let's see if there are any other things I want to look at here. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look at some of these notes. I have a bunch of notes from uh, watching a few uh, ground um, ground schools uh, on uh, tailwheel flying uh, earlier today in preparation for this flying. Um, I think I will keep on using uh, runway nine uh, for today. Um, okay, this uh, this HSI is completely out of whack. I'm facing west, and this is uh, okay. It will probably uh, uh, get get it together when I start up the plane. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll remain on runway nine because that's what I'm used to from uh, from the uh, previous uh, workout session, and then I will change up if the wind dictates otherwise. I'll set the 
altimeter, so I don't uh, mess that up like I did last time. I checked on the, the video, I had 300 feet more on the, the altimeter than, than I should have had. Flaps back up again. All right, let's do this. Uh, and yoke is back on. And battery on. Yeah, now this one spins to life and it's, uh, yeah, now it's correct. West. Beacon on. Okay. Okay, I didn't open up a fuel tank. Let's see here. I will take, uh, I wasn't very careful about uh, planning the fuel here. So I have, uh, what is this? About 16, 17 gallons, 14 in the center and 20 in the rear. I'll take the front tank for, uh, for a spin and then I'll uh, move backwards. So now I can start pumping up the, uh, let me lean properly forwards here. Fuel pressure like this and prime it. Okay, we have 20 of oh, this god awful uh, gauge. Uh, what is that? 26 degrees. So it's uh, pretty hot. So I'll uh, leave it at four uh, prime strokes this time, if that's what I got. Uh, throttle is cracked, propeller full forward, and I'll uh, see if I can start this plane. So any. One who wants to be carved by the propeller? No? Okay, fine. Suit yourself. All right, clear prop. Yeah, hand prop it. It actually, uh, you've probably seen the flight chops video of uh, those people actually hand propping a beaver. Um, and it's actually possible in, uh, in x to do that. Um, though they haven't modeled it on this plane, I've seen other planes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, that would have been cool to, to be able to do that, or at least to, to to pull the uh, propeller through just to um, uh, um, to get the oil circulating or, uh, or or just check for uh, hydraulic locks or anything like that. Um, all right, so engine looks good, oil pressure is good. Um, the temp temperatures are way too cold, but uh, that, that'll sort itself out soon enough. Okay, let me get the engine up a little bit here. Here we go. Let's go flying. Are you saying that I'm babbling too much? I've been on for half an hour and I've just been able to start the engine. That's how I do. I'm thinking a lot and uh, I just like being in this plane, even without flying. You should see me when I start uh, uh, doing flight plans especially if it's uh if it's ifr uh and then and, and prop, proper ifr that's uh that's a long story okay let's get going The engine is 
uh, always a little bit slow to respond, but it's even slower when uh, when it's uh, cold. You know, I, I know you weren't complaining. I was uh, just uh, letting you know that I'm aware, at least, that I'm babbling. Okay, so this is uh, back taxing runway nine. So uh, okay, I don't see any uh, incoming Spitfires that look like they're going to crash. And. Yeah, well, I wouldn't see on this side anyway. Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver 524 a cough attack, uh, back taxing, runway 9, Oak Ridge. A little bit of uphill here to get up to the runway. Just close up this. Yes, I did, but I'm gonna start with. Uh, oh, well, I'm stopping now. I'm gonna stop. Start with um, with the, the runway that I uh, spent uh, time uh, doing uh, uh, three point landings on, uh, because I've spent so much time there that I'm gonna I'm gonna want to compare the uh, work that I do now with uh, with that, so I have a baseline. Um, then I'll change it up when I. Uh, when I get that sorted out. That's one of the things I, I talked about last uh, on the last flight uh, when I did uh, my touch and goes here, is that... Uh... Hello, David. Well, uh, the beaver is soon to be up. Uh... Um, yeah, what I talked about last time is that I, I was talking about as I was on downwind for one of the... Uh, uh, Touch and goes that I wanted to try out something to try out either more um, more trim or uh, uh, shot of power on the final to see if I could arrest that uh, sink that I get on the on landing. And I thought if I do both, then I don't know which works, if any. So one of the points there is to be uh, at least try to be somewhat. Um, scientific here to, to try out things uh, in an orderly manner so that's why I'm noting that taking off with a right crosswind is better but taking off with a left crosswind because that's what I had last time as well yeah still X-11 although um, uh, watching uh, the uh, streams that CG is doing with his uh, Piper Cub in stock X-12 uh, especially when he, he's getting into weather like he's been done doing recently uh, yeah it's uh, I get envious I'll tell you uh, but I'm still a bit on the chicken side in terms of uh, moving my whole rig over there um, anyway Oak Ridge traffic be fast for a cafe lined up runway 9 will be ready to depart in uh, 45 seconds Oak Ridge Up, down, up, down, up, and down, and right, 
leaning to the left. Left, leaning to the right. Perfect. Rudder is okay. That is important for uh, to have a functioning rudder. That is all good. Prop is good. Check for carb ice. No carb ice. Perfect. Flappage set. Bridge trim set. And uh, off we go. Yes, I do. Uh, but uh, the beaver is the most important, so. Uh, so. But uh, the, oh, the scenery is also uh, kind of halfway the same importance. Oak Ridge traffic, be verified for Gotham taking off runway 9, left close traffic, Oak Ridge. Landings is on the, the program today. Um, however, I think it would be wise of me to uh, warm up with a um, three point landing just to see, uh, for one thing, if it has improved. Awkward traffic can be ever fighting for a Gaffa. Left crosswind, runway 9, awkward. And just to warm up the um, flying muscles. Oakridge traffic, beaver 5 to 4 alpha. Left, downwind. One way 9. Oakridge. Seems like uh, scenery is, uh, you could just pull it over, more or less, uh, but there will be some uh, uh, some problems with some of the... Uh, the, I, the thing I've heard most bad things about is the ortho and water, uh, but everything else is just uh, details. But uh, I know that David can probably uh, speak more on this, because he's been experimenting a lot with it. Okay, I have not that much crosswind. I have a two knot crosswind now, so um, uh, it's slightly on the tail side. So uh, so it's uh, it would be best in all uh, respects to take off the other way, but uh, two three knots is not that much. Bridge traffic, beaver 5 to 4 Kafa, turning final, uh, correction, base to final, runway 9. Stop and go, uh, Oak Ridge. Okay, three points is my goal now. This is better. So, last time I flew around here, the uh, approach got worse and worse. I got slid more and more to the right here. Uh, this is kind of the way you want to approach this airport to come slightly to the left and uh, then merge with the runway as you get closer. So now the wind has picked up, so that's that's nice. Five knots, direct crosswind. So right rudder and 
left aileron. Landing flaps. Way too high. Yeah, well, the problem hasn't gone, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go. Awkward traffic, beaver on the roll, runway 9. Oakridge. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not surprised that the problem hasn't disappeared overnight. mostly happy that it's actually controllable after landing because that's one of the things I had problems with for uh, months and months and months and months and months. Uh, there was many a time when I was first starting to fly this plane where uh, I would be able to control it after landing but or uh, my landings didn't end up in a ground loop but it didn't mean that I had control over it. It was more like I did by accident some things that turned out to be okay. Oak Ridge traffic, beaver fight for a kafa, left crosswind, turning left downwind, runway 9, Oak Ridge. Um, and the, the, the uh, not knowing what I was doing uh, was kind of part, partially why the plane is so fun, because you, you, you're you kind of hunting for, uh, for, for a solution. And um, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm hunting for a solution, but I'm uh, putting in the work to do it. And, uh, and I'm doing it under very, very decent circumstances. It's a rather lengthy runway. It's not a horrific approach. The weather isn't horrific. Uh, the plane is relatively well balanced in terms of loading. And um, I mean the in a frame of mind where I don't have to get down and land and uh, be away. I can just go around and have, you know, another try. Um, so that makes it easier. Uh, so I'm not going to say that um, it's going to pan out uh, uh, when I'm uh, in the bush. It's also just a nice way of spending time at a very beautiful airport. Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver 5 to Furukawa, turning left base, runway 9. Oak Ridge. Um, Alright, what am I doing now? Okay, let's uh, let's try for that uh, wheel landing. Keep the speed up a little bit. Set it down on the main wheels. Pin it down with a slightly forward stick. This was a bad turn, really. Okay, let's compensate. Oakridge traffic, Beaver five to four kafa. Final runway nine. Stop and go, Oakridge. So, uh, so I'm going to keep the tail up as soon as I get the main wheels down. And uh, be careful when I let the uh, nose come down, because that will probably make the plane go slightly to the right. Okay. 
Ooh, that was nice. It's probably my best uh, wheel landing ever. You know what that means? I'm going to try it again. And this time... This time. Oakridge traffic, be able to work off on the roll. Runway 9, remaining in the pattern. Oakridge. Flaps. The um, the benefit of um, the wheel landing is that it's uh, you don't have to do this uh, come down and float a little bit before you can slow down and uh, drop down on the uh, on the three three point. You can go directly for it and then go uh, land early. Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver Fat for Agafa, left crosswind runway nine Oak Ridge. And um, so if you need to get it, get down early, that's a way of setting the plane down uh, uh, early in a, in a push landing, for example. And uh, for crosswinds, apparently it's better. Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver Fight for Alpha, left downwind runway 9. Because uh, you will have the tail up and in, in the... Uh, in this, in the slipstream where you have more air over the rudder so you have more control and you have more speed. The problem though is when you are slowing down you will have less rudder authority and then you will have the uh, gyroscopic effect when you're settling the tail down which is I don't know how they deal with that. I don't know how, I, how I've dealt with it because I've landed successfully in many crosswind situations though unsuccessfully unsuccess also in many situations so I have no idea. That's just something I need to figure out. Now look, you got David started on the uh, on the the uh, intricacies of uh, making uh, explain uh, twelve work with uh, old scenery. David is a bit like me in a way. Uh, if you put put money on him, he will just go. Or put a battery. It's a uh, it's a unstoppable force. Okay, let's try this again. Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver five to four Akafa, turning left base, runway nine, Oak Ridge. Let's make this turn. Uh, slightly steeper. I've been a little bit lazy on the rudder on these turns, so I've kind of been, you know, slipping a little bit. Uh, the, the, the turn has been very inefficient. Oakridge traffic, Beaver Fight for a Gotham, final runway 9, stop and go. Oakridge. Uh, this was better at least, but uh, still. have to remember that if I uh, start wobbling in one direction or other I'm gonna turn in the direction I'm starting to go because that will uh, grab the other side by the wing and uh, hold me back hopefully at least okay set the wheels down and then pin it down
This one felt a little bit more scary for a while there. Seems like the plane wanted to go to the left. Take off flaps. Oakridge traffic, paper fast rock on the go, runway 9. Oakridge. One of the videos I saw earlier today, um, the instructor said um, uh, whatever corrections you need to do, don't do prolonged, like uh, a lot of right rudder and leave it there. Uh, do quick steps with it, like like a quick step and then go, let it let it go, uh, because that will, uh, if you stay too long, you will it will be too late to uh, to relieve the control pressure. So. Uh, I think that's what I've been doing uh, anyway, but it's uh, kind of uh, interesting to see uh, uh, indication of how to, to behave in that regard. I've seen seen videos of this uh, online where people, uh, you can see, even with the, the, you know, uh, some of the bigger planes, you, you you see the controls do quick stabs and then go back. Oakridge traffic, Beaver Fight for Gaffa, left, uh, crossing runway 9, Oakridge. Oakridge traffic, paper fight for Rafa, left now in runway 9, Oakridge. Alright, I guess I need to try to pin, pin down a spot I want to land at. Uh, so how about a beam those trees there? The first line of trees very close to the runway there. Next to that road. I'll try for that. Just to have something to go for. This landing sticks. I will try to do the same to do a uh, uh, pinpoint uh, landing at that spot uh, in three point. Then I will go over to Aubrey Mountain and uh, do the same there. Oakridge traffic, Beaver Fast for Gaffa, left base, runway nine, Oakridge. Traffic, paper fight for a gaffer. Final, runway 9, stop and go, Oak Ridge. Now I'm lower than I'm usually. If, I, if my engine goes now, I'm uh, more or less toast, I think. So, let's uh, hope that doesn't happen. Okay, that tree line that I'm talking about is that one. Can land a beam that's on the third. Uh, Runway center line. Almost a bounce. Doesn't feel like it's completely under control. It may look like it, but it feels a little bit off. Um, 
Yeah, well, I don't have the best feeling, but uh, let's try the same for a three point and uh, move on to Aubrey Mountain. Um, I'm gonna do a no flap takeoff here and uh, do a little bit of uh, an aggressive departure. Or good traffic, be fast for a cafe on the roll, runway 9, or No flaps with this plane is kind of strange. Smartest thing to do, but it can be done. I will uh, take it over the uh, grave site of our Spitfire hero. And then a zoom climb. As far as zoom climb can be done with the beaver. Yeah, 300 feet. Oak Ridge traffic, beaver fight for a graph left crosswind runway 9, Oak Ridge. Why? I I don't know. Let me see if there is any uh, um, should be a checklist. There's an e-board. Uh, let me see if I can make that. I really don't know. I, uh, I haven't thought about it. I just fly it by feel, so I generally don't. Uh, uh, I'm gonna take that when I get down. Oakridge traffic, Beaver Fight for Agafa is uh, just about to turn left base runway 9. Stop and go, Oakridge. I'm uh, not that big on flying by numbers, in a way. Uh, I've... Uh, sounds probably a bit pretentious, but I like flying by feel. Orchestra traffic, Beaver Fight for Kaffa, turning final runway, 9, stop and go. Jesus Christ, this is a bad uh, turn. So much for flying by feel, eh? Inside TFR. Okay, three points. I'm gonna get this thing away. And I'm gonna try to set it down at the same place. Uh, which means I have to be slower. The uh, three point needs to be slower. So with the uh, speed and altitude I have now, it looks like I'm probably gonna float, but let's uh, give it a try. later than I thought, but the landing was quite good. And I'm not talking about the uh, feet per minute. It was more like I felt that the plane was uh, kind of rounding out and landing uh, in a more smooth fashion than I uh, have tended to do. I don't mind a hard landing. I just I don't like flaring five feet above the ground and let the plane just fall down. Let me give me give me a second to see if I can find anything on the kneeboard here. If there's any reference to, uh, um, can I do this and uh, pull it out so it's larger? Nope, cannot. Uh, 
Okay, let's not let the engine stall here. Work which traffic paper five for Alpha is uh, holding midfield runway nine for thirty seconds. Oak Ridge. Uh Speed is sixty miles. Well, uh, miles. Whoever uses that. Uh, no. So in the references here. It's just referencing rate of climb. David, do you know any of this? Uh, VY and uh, all of these numbers on the Beaver? I I don't know. This is uh, what it says in climb or takeoff. It should be VY. Okay, so. Uh, Take off, uh, climb, 65 miles per hour. And as soon as uh, safe height, uh, speed, 80 miles. Um, 80 miles, uh, that's 75 knots or so, isn't it? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, knots and miles is more or less equal. It's just mile, uh, knots is uh, slightly more worth. 70 towers, okay, yeah. So what I have, though, is um, I've done some calculations based on the uh, stall speed of the plane. This red line here, I marked that on my uh, airspin indicator. That's, uh, probably see that, uh, I'm not sure if you can. Uh, I'm gonna do a proper zoom here. There's uh, my name, of course. Um, DMMS, uh, Defined Minimum Maneuvering Speed, which is uh, based on stall speed plus a weird fraction that gives you some leeway for uh, turning in, um, in the uh, pattern. So you should be kind of in the pattern careful to be below this, um, um, or at least to unload the wing properly if you have to turn in... Um, under that speed, so I kind of I'm kind of thinking of this as uh, if I'm climbing, you know, uh, wings level, I can be at 60 or or 55 for that matter. And perfectly fine. I can be slower, but the, that's you know completely uh, completely nice. Uh, but uh, but in general, when I uh, depart, I will try to be at or around this speed uh, for best climb performance. Uh, it also gives me better visibility out the window and uh, cooling of the engine. So if I really need to climb, I can climb at 50 knots, but uh, or 53 or 52 knots. But uh, the engine will overheat in a in a second if I do that. So um, kind of uh, uh, not completely uh, right to have a glider airspeed indicator in a Beaver, but that's uh, that's. Uh, it's a weird beaver. Um, Oakridge traffic beaver fight for Akafa. Departing runway 9, straight out to Aubrey Mountain. Oakridge. Well, first, I'm gonna let the plane sit on the center tank for a few seconds to see that it's uh, actually uh, keeping. Okay, seems, seems good. I have a uh, half an hour, every half an hour, my uh, GPS is programmed to tell me to uh, check for fuel uh, so that I can remember to change tanks if I have to. Very useful.
another thing that I forgot to uh, to, to discuss is that there was a tip tip from uh, this guy uh, who had the ground school uh, video I was watching, uh, Doug Rosendahl. He said that there was a a way that they taught tailwheel students is to uh, um, to line up your nose uh, as the pilot with the nose of the plane with the far end of the runway so that when you were in a crosswind situation you would use the rudder to line that up so if the runway was like, like this that wouldn't be lined up for me I would be sideways because the nose is pointing this way so that's a way of setting the plane up so that it's lined up correctly with the runway even though the the plane might go sideways and then you do the uh, ailerons to, to steer the plane with. So here we have Aubrey Mountain. Oh, I forgot to go try to land on one wheel and roll down the runway. So uh, if one of you can remind me, uh, I'm going to just do a couple of patterns here at uh, Aubrey and then I'll go back to Oak Ridge. Remind me to, when I go back to Oak, uh, Oak Ridge, to uh, land on one wheel and then roll on that wheel over the runway. Just to see if I can uh, do it and see if that's even possible at all. So, uh, that would be helpful if you could uh, remind me. Okay, this will be, this will most likely be a uh, wheel landing because I'm too fast and too high. Well, and I'm even uh, completely out of configuration with the land, with the runway. Never come to this runway from this side before. So what do I have wind here? Feels like it's uh, also you know, yeah. I'm I'm landing with a better wind situation now. It's uh, slightly to my right on the nose. So, down. How was that bounce? So, uh, it's definitely a feeling that uh, landing on uh, in a three point is better for a short field because all that time I need to spend. Um, waiting for the speed to be low enough to be able to get the wheel uh, tail down. And when I get the tail down, that's the three-point landing speed. So it's kind of like uh, uh, landing a, uh, a wheel landing is like uh, a, a three-point landing with uh, an extra step that sometimes is useful. Um, but uh, but if you have to real land slow, I think uh, three point is uh, is the deal. But again, if uh, if uh, if you have to do a uh, a wheel landing to be able to do um, to to deal with the crosswind, I guess that's just what you need to do. And then if your performance says that uh, wheel landings need two hundred feet extra, well, okay, maybe that keeps you from landing. Okay, I'll do one pattern and I'll see if I can try a tail uh, or a three point landing and then stop by the parking lot over there or the uh, garage like I did last time. And then I'll uh, go back and do my wheelie at o Oak Ridge. to a three-point takeoff. Looks 
so. I don't need to be over the red line, but I need to unload the wings so that I don't pull um, pull up the angle of attack uh, while that's that slow. Speaking of angle of attack, I have an angle of attack meter here. I just forget to look at it. Probably not enough in my face. And uh, I really don't know how to use it properly either. I've been flying a lot with it and I try to pay attention to it, but it's... Uh, it's uh yeah it's I basically just ignore it but uh, I have it in case I uh, in case I need it and I just think it looks cool so it's a uh, bling basically I guess it's uh, I have a bit of things to learn. Uh, I mean, uh, I know most uh, good pilots uh, who know what they're talking about use angle of attack rather than speed. I just haven't. Uh, yeah, exactly. It, it's uh, it it takes it it uh, it knows how the plane feels and behaves right now, as opposed to uh, to just. Uh, airspeed indicator and the airspeed indicator will change values based on your angle as well so it's very really, really imprecise uh, speaking of imprecise where the hell there it is okay uh, my pattern here is horrific let me s let me do uh, uh, cross-corrected maneuver here for a while Let's see if that does anything so, uh, right rudder, left tail on. It's very cool with this. I'm coming back behind the shadow of the mountains in the distance here. This is gonna be really bad. No, it's not happening. It's going around. That needs to, uh, I need to have at least one good approach to this airport. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did a uh, slip. I, I've never understood the, the difference between slip and skid. So if anyone has a good uh, good way of determining what that is, I mean, I think of, you know, left or right rudder and the opposite aileron. That's what I'm thinking of. And uh, whether it's slip or skid, I have no idea. I don't know what, what the difference is in terms of... Uh, uh, just trying to uh, to lose uh, altitude. So I'm gonna try to at least not come in uh, that badly this time. Okay, now I'm on I think one of the things that throws me off is that I haven't lined up this uh, HSI with the runway heading. And I actually use that a lot. I actually always use that for when I'm landing. Um, so I, I'm probably unconsciously looking at that and uh, thinking that I'm seeing the runway heading and I'm not. So now I'm on left base and this looks much better. Helps to look around a little bit. Somebody's talking about skid as opposed to slip, uh, I think. Maybe that's just an old-fashioned. Okay, this is better. This is better. Okay. Uh, I'm 
gonna land before that road that is crossing the runway over there. So three point. So I need to be all basically stalling as I'm uh, finished flaring. Which is not gonna happen too early though. I can see that with the speed I have. Oh, good grief. Yeah, well, that's one of the, uh, uh, turned out okay, and uh, the landing distance was uh, reasonable, but it uh, was a float. Uh, let's see here. There is skid, there is slip, oh, skid, skid is there is slip, but what you're, uh, what you're trying to do is slip. Uh, skid is there. But... Angle of attack was way too low blue for my approach. What do you mean? And CG, what is the difference between slip and skid? Because I... I don't know. <laughs> uh, you want, want me to get in a stall spin and uh, die? But I, I mean, it's... Um, yeah, drifting turn, basically, right? Uh, like a rear-wheel drive car when you're spinning and you're sliding the back end. That's that's the... Uh, that's a slip when, you're, when you're, your ass is following, right? Uh, and your skid, that's the opposite. You're, you're, you're leaning on the inside of the turn. Is that what, what we're thinking about? So the skid is when you're uh, the wrong way, basically? Yeah, exactly. The, the, the nose is turning into the turn. And when you're skidding... No, when you're... Yeah. And when you're... What? Ugh. Yeah, you see why I don't understand this. I, I get these uh, concepts confused. But I'm going to do a uh, departure to this direction, and then I'm going to turn around come back, and I'm going to see if I can uh, use the uh, angle of attack meter. Um, uh, I'll, I'll practice them on my way back to Oak Ridge, so you can, uh, if you hold off a little bit, you can talk me through it. But... Um, uh, yeah, well, uh, David, you talked about the color of this uh, AOA. I'm going to depart straight out, teardrop and come back. And uh, while I'm departing, you can try to see if you can explain what you meant. Probably not the best place to start experimenting with uh, skits and uh, and all that. So now that I am above the trees here, I'm gonna let the nose come down and then speed up. Blue circle. Okay, so it's green now because I have all the. Uh, see here. I want the AO to be the blue circle. Okay, let's see. That's the blue circle. If I'm, if I have it yellow below, too fast, above the circle, you're too low, too slow for the current angle. Okay. So I can see if I push it forward now, it's green because I have flaps and all kinds of throttle. And if I get it like that, so the blue circle. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll try to set up a longish approach and to just try to 
configure for the blue and then see that. But can I, uh, if you approach, you're still on the low green. Okay, too fast, you'll float, okay. But do I want to be on the blue all the way to flare? Or do I want it to uh, kind of uh, go over on towards the red while I'm flaring? VX is great at blue circle, okay. Oh, cool. Well, so I'm getting a master class here. That's excellent. Thank you. So now I'm too fast, apparently, for what I'm doing. Uh, where am I going? That's the wrong way. Flare will take you in the right. Okay. So I want to sink, and I'm too fast because it's yellow. It's below the blue. So I'm going to do like this. Okay, a little bit too slow. Uh, but then again, I want my descent rate to go up, so then I have to take the speed out. And then I fly the blue dot. A little and blue dot. That is very interesting. So now if I want the to arrest the rate of descent, I don't care about the speed, I just give a bit more power. The approach speed is much slower than I'm uh, I'm I'm used to thinking. Now I'm a little bit below as I'm still a bit below here, so can stand to Oh yeah. Well, it's uh, at least getting me to be slow because I'm uh way early, but uh that was uh I didn't have enough uh uh to uh to rest the descent there, but I was probably just on the slow side. Uh, if you hold it into flare, flare will okay. It will still approach like it would. No, no speed, proper design. Yeah, exactly. Well, it it, it def definitely kept my speed way down from what I'm used to. But I think I need slightly more at uh, uh, speed or a boost of power at the end there to just keep me from uh, because that transition uh, is what what gets me if I'm slightly too slow because I I run out of uh, uh, of. Uh, elevator but it was very fascinating to watch it because uh, uh, I have, haven't really paid attention I didn't know where to look um, but when should it be green what, what is green what does that mean is that yeah what is it what uh, what's uh, was that good for yeah exactly I'm gonna try uh, so what you're saying uh, VX that's the uh, blue dot. So if I really want uh, the angle here. Okay. So if I want to clear obstacles like I am now, uh, mountains and all that mess, I want to climb into, into the blue dot. Not below, not above. Use yellow slash green, so uh, slightly faster below uh, for two point line. Okay, exactly. Okay. I'm gonna switch to rare tank while I'm sitting here. Blue circle for steep climbers. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna take take off flaps, and then I'm gonna just climb directly towards. The mountain ahead, uh, this one. I'm pointing, but uh, I'm you're not seeing where I'm pointing. And I'm going to climb blue circle toward that mountain and just see what happens. See if that angle is actually steep enough. Exactly. No, no stalling. 
red. Bluish. Oh, it's still red, so I probably lifted a bit too early. So I'm gonna unload a little bit. Climb the mountain, that's for sure, but uh, so let's see here. There are two half circles, so that means for this configuration, uh, around fifty five. Knots or so. Really, uh, really climbing. Does it help to take off flaps? Yeah, climb flaps, that's the deal. Jeez, Christ, that makes a difference. Well, I'm slightly on the side of the mountain, but, uh... Okay, now I am uh, getting into it here. Okay, I'm gonna leave a little bit of climb flaps, turn around and have a look at uh, what I just did here. That was pretty steep, but now the engine is melting. So, uh, look at this. It's getting into the yellow now. So I'm gonna walk it back. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I just, I was just staring at the uh, angle of attack meter. I was, I was f completely forgetting about the flaps. So I climbed up from there, you know, almost over this mountain. Could probably done it if I clean up the flaps. Okay, that was interesting, very interesting. As you see, you learn every day. And I've had this instr instrument in the plane since uh, forever. I uh, just, just neglected it completely. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's probably, uh, probably fine. Now, skids, slips. Skittage and slippage. I can hear you typing, CG. Coordinate it, turn to the left, let's see here. Now oh, you're really pushing me to the limit here. You want to be coordinated as well. Let's see if I have room enough here. Yeah. Coordinate it, turn to the left. in the center. Then push left rudder right left. Yeah, so the ball comes. Yeah, well, I do just not do a steep turn here. Push more. Well, it's really hard. I need to slow down if I need to do more than this. Uh, the, the rudder is really, really hard now. This is skid, okay? So the ass is whipping out here. That's the skid, okay? And the opposite is the um, slip. Okay, it's uh, coordinated. Right rudder. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, okay. So slipping. That's what I do uh, when I want the uh, plane to slow down. And skidding is... Uh, I almost never do skidding.
But why why are people talking about forward slips? Is there a backward slip? Let me try to slow down a little bit just to have a feel because uh, at this speed it's uh, really difficult uh, to uh, to do full right rudder. Forward and side. Okay. Forward is slip is steep descent at slow speed. Side slip is crosswind. Okay, now I'm uh, confused again. Uh, so what is the difference then? Is it just what you use it for? Because it's it kind of it's the same configuration of what you're doing. It's just the one you're doing for descent, and well, the other one is the crosswind configuration. Or am I confused there? Let's uh, slow down a little anyway. Forward slip. Put nose to side, opposite aileron. You're getting a plane. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, that's the, the forward slip is basically now I'm slow, so, so now I can now I have full right rudder, and uh, I'm uh, turning to the left. So I'm tracking this direction because I have uh, right rudder and uh, more or less left aileron. So I'm uh, you know tracking sideways. This is the slip to slow down, but I wouldn't do this for. Uh, for a uh, crosswind, uh, because now I'm tracking. Uh, uh, my 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 plane wouldn't land very nicely this way. But if the uh, wind was coming from uh, from uh, let's see here, uh, from from that side, from the from left side, the, it would push the na the tail so that I would be tracking correctly. So that's the difference here, I think. But it's much easier to do uh, the, uh, uh, the the uh, slip now, and let me do the skid. Yeah. So now the passengers would be uh, leaning towards the door here, and I'm like this. And if I do it like this, I would go this way. Peek at what mountain in front here? Uh, let me put it this way. I'm gonna stay here for a few seconds. Okay, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna aim uh, towards the airport and do that. Do it that way. Okay, let, let me, uh, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to line up with uh, with the west runway at uh, at uh, Oak Ridge Air and uh, do what you're saying. Full rudder and uh, ailerons to maintain direction. So I'm going to face westward towards the west runway, and I'm going to do, uh, for example, uh, I have a crosswind now, so uh, I'm going to do full right rudder and continue towards the airport. Because I have 10 knots uh, wind from the right here, it will push my tail so that it kind of evens out. So that's the point of uh, doing this while the forward slip while landing. But if it was uh, wind calm, I would be uh, slipping sideways here. Yeah. yeah, okay, so uh, so there's a difference in uh, how you configure the plane in that uh, regard as well. Oh, okay. I, I need to re... Uh, um, to to uh, basically almost do... A, I probably should do a, a session of air work, because I haven't done, haven't done much of that. I've uh, just uh, learned myself how to fly without messing with that. I didn't see that plane... When I was there, pre pre flighting. Um. 
Okay, I'm gonna do a one wheel landing here now. How is uh, 12 in that regard then, uh, David? Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver Fight for Agafa is on left now in runway 9 for uh, low approach. Oak Ridge. Oh, cool. Well, so another benefit of getting x 12. I know that uh, the depth of um, modeling in x 12 is much better because uh, all of the work that uh, um, Austin has done uh, with, the, with all of these weird planes that he has been uh, working on. That's excellent. Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver Fight for Agatha, left base, runway uh, 9, Oak Ridge. Okay. So I have a left crosswind. So I'm gonna be. get down here. This doesn't look promising. My approaches today have been uh, really bad. So, right rudder, left aileron, and let's keep the left wheel on the ground, then just uh, roll along. or whatever distance I'm able to uh, do that. Oh, come on. Okay, that's good. Now it's stable. Let's just not hit the wing. Okay, I want to do that again, because I was very sloppy on the approach, so I basically had uh, maybe one-third of the uh, runway in contact. But uh, proof of concept is uh, good, I think. Day of bad approaches covering the whole dash. Seat of the pants. It's uh, what they what the what they did in good old days. So I guess there is something to it. Oak Ridge traffic. Beaver fight for Gamba. Left downwind runway nine for low approach. Oak Ridge. Yeah, uh, do you think that uh, you were too locked into speeds and all that? Was that uh, because of a uh, lot of time in a simulator, being uh, focused on uh, the numbers? Or uh, is that just how you are? Because I'm, I think I'm probably somewhat... Uh, <laughs> you're just too stable. Um, as you see, I'm not too stable. I, uh, uh, I'm too lazy to bother with uh, the, being on the numbers. Uh, I think at least. But uh, that's why when you ask me what what the VX or VY for this plane is, uh, or the actual stall speed, I don't know. I mean, the the stall speed is wherever it is under the conditions that you are in and you have to kind of listen and feel for it and uh which is why i like to have uh uh rudders and uh yoke to be control loaded because i can feel it in the yoke uh the rudders when the plane is about to stall because i can feel how mushy and uh unresponsive it is 
is one of the first thing I noticed the first time I had a flight lesson is that uh, this is completely different from uh, spring or uh, uh, rubber band uh, loaded uh, yoke. Focus traffic, paper fire to Rakava, left base to final runway 9 for low approach. Oak Ridge. Yeah, this is probably at least better. Oh, okay. So, low enough to die if I lose the engine. That's good. Day one, he was. He always was fascinated how low he tell me to lock in a speed, and I held it. Okay. Oh, how he did tell. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so you're, you're like an autopilot. I think that's uh, one of the things I wouldn't be able to do very well to say, okay, you maintain 74 knots for the approach and land at 63 knots. Uh, well, uh, I'll be somewhere between 100 and 60, and then I'll land in between 40 and 60. Something like that. Which is why my approaches are sometimes very uneven, especially if I'm not concentrating. Let's uh, see if I can do this wheelie again. That was kind of fun. Okay, one wheel. This is actually very fun. Let's get going. Excellent. That was much fun. I didn't know that was even possible. But here we go. Explain for the win. Oak Ridge traffic, paper flat for across the upwind runway 9. Oak Ridge. Yeah, Delta, that's... Uh, uh, that's what I got as well. I was... Like this. In the instrument panel, you know, uh, looking at all the gauges. Um, yeah. Similar uh, simulator pilots, I know that's uh, how it goes. So, and he knew that beforehand, before we, I, uh, because I knew, uh, he t I told him that I had been flying a lot in flight simulators. So he sat me on the right side in a plane where the uh, there, there was a glass cockpit, uh, a really bad glass cockpit, by, by the way. And not the Garmin or some other shite. Uh, I don't remember what it was. Very ugly. Um, awkward traffic. We were fine for a couple left. Downwind. One way. Nine. Uh, yeah. Awkward. And, uh, but the the left side was the one that had most of the uh, flight instruments. The, left, the right side was more, you know, uh, you know he, uh, he probably turned the screen into something uninteresting, so I didn't, didn't see much. So I had to look over on his side to be able to see uh, to see the gauges, and uh, and he noticed that I was kind of uh, obsessing with that. So I've been very conscious about that since um, since that time uh, to uh, to at least be able to uh, to to fly without uh, looking inside to uh, to feel the plane. Of course, that's also when I after that first lesson when I started investing in uh, force feedback stuff. Well, I guess that's uh, what what's, uh, that's what CG is doing is also these days flying his uh, Super Cup, just looking at the terrain, and the angles, and uh, feeling the speeds. So, yeah, exactly. That's what I that's what I would have wanted. Uh, a True Piper Cub, a real, uh, you know, just uh, airspeed, uh, whiskey compass, uh, altimeter with no hundreds and just thousand hand. Uh, Oak Ridge traffic, Piper Five for Alpha, left base to final runway nine. Be doing another low approach. Oak Ridge. Uh, 
Well, I'm not surprised by that, David. You are different, so... Uh, um, I would, wouldn't be surprised that that would uh, manifest itself in, uh, in the sim, or in the non-sim. Well, I, I could change to this place, to uh, from the dog cam, or the wing cam, or the GoPro cam. This is a nice place to sit. this one. This would be scary. And now it's scary because I'm about to crash. So what am I doing? I'm doing... Um, I'm doing a tailwheel. Or a, or a tailwheel. What am I doing? I'm saying I'm not doing a wheel landing. That's what I'm doing. On the line. And pin it. Stay the course. It's uh, uh again, I don't like this. Probably need more practicing this, but uh, at least I know it's doable. pattern for a uh, final landing which will be uh, well you can vote people do I do a wheel landing or a three point awkward traffic people fight for a cover up wind runway nine bridge And uh, this time I need to uh, to pay attention to the uh, to the uh, AOA meter because I I forgot about it again because I'm used to not looking at it. Oak Ridge traffic Beaver five to four Alpha left crosswind runway nine Oak Ridge. Traffic, Beaver 5 to Fork Alpha, left, downwind, runway 9, full stop, Oak Ridge. Right, folks, do you have any preference? Do I land wheel landing or three point landing? I I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't, uh, I can go both ways. And most, uh, most importantly, do I ground loop or not? That's the question, I guess. Upside down, okay. Well, uh, how about I land and then flip upside down? <laughs> Actually, been a long time since I uh, fl flipped over from uh, uh, overuse of the brakes. That's uh, That's been a long time since that happened. Probably thanks to the dog in the back of the plane, because it's so heavy. So. Okay, so you've been gliding. Cool. Too much flaps. Was almost in the emergency flaps region. I'm going to try a three-point landing with uh, use of the AOA indicator. I think that's about time. Oak Ridge traffic, Beaver 5 for Alpha, turning uh, base to final, runway 9, full stop, Oak Ridge. Ah, 
Nice. So, now I'm gonna nail it. Okay, too fast. Now it's on ish. Now it's green. feel completely uh, controlled, but uh, at least it would be uh, uh, short. I was very, very short. I felt like uh, I was just about to uh, kick over uh, with the stall there. Um, uh, which airport was that? side of the mountain. The side of the mountain? Uh, um, yeah, that's what I felt too. I, uh, and also I, I could have given it a little squeeze of power because I could feel um, I could feel it's kind of losing uh, uh, energy and I would have needed that slight more to uh, to deal with the one that has my well, uh, 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 you're not talking about green acres are you they're uh, um, what is it called yeah I don't I don't know green acres that has a mountain on the other side There's Hilltop, of course, the last one. Road on, yeah, okay, yeah, that uh, Green Acres has that uh, road on the backside. Um, and that river, very close to the approach. You have to kind of fly like the, uh, along the river and then sneak in on the uh, final. That's Green Acres uh, at the Columbia River. Oak Ridge traffic, Bieber 524 Akava, clear off runway 9 to the left, Oak Ridge. I haven't been back at uh, Green Acres for a long time, uh, so I might need to go back there. I need to go back to all of those airports, but uh, I kind of miss uh, uh, flying in, um, in Hell's Canyon. And by the way, Hell's Canyon some of the fields that we couldn't put in the challenge are in uh, Hell's Canyon. I'll tell you. Uh, they, they don't have uh, ICAO codes, so they couldn't possibly uh, be included, but some of those Hell's Canyon fields are amazing. Um, some true gems there. Really, really, really good stuff. You, you, we could have had a bush challenge only in Hell's Canyon, I think. There are so many fields there, so many ex excellent uh, bush strips and uh, bars and uh, things like that. Um, there's one called Cache Creek, I think, uh, with an up uphill slope that you wouldn't believe. And uh, and, and it's actually like that. I, I have this um, um, fly, let's see if you can see this, fly Idaho uh, pack. Have a look at this. There's even a uh, kind of a button to close this thing with. Um, two volumes, two small uh, booklets. Um, so one, the vol one volume is the airport, it, you know, and the you know environments to uh, you know to come in and land, and the other one is just background story and uh, and um, kind of you know stories basically. So this this is fly Idaho, but it includes a lot of the airports in um, or, and around um, uh, uh, 
Hell, Hell's Canyon because they are basically in Idaho. Let's just see here. Um, I find this uh, Cache Creek so I can show you because they ha it has um, uh, airport um, kind of uh, slope information. Cache Creek. So I'll just be very primitive here and show you. Uh, let's see if this shows up. You see that's the airport uphill there, and there's uh, some uh, information on the airport itself there. But then you could fold this out like a yeah, like a old-fashioned porn magazine, and then you have uh, information about uh, the uh, surroundings and elevation uh, figures. This is showing up really badly, but. Uh, um, so the profile uh, is really hilarious. Uh, elevation gain in this very short runway, it's uh, uh, the length is 1400 feet. And the elevation gain is 150 feet. So it's over 10% um, uh, uphill. Um, uh, narrow runway. Use caution not to snag wingtip on uphill bank because there's uh, uh, very close to the runway, there's an uh, there's a bank that you can crack your uh, runway uh, the your wing into. Extreme rodent damage to runway surface, very nice. Expect sink over runway. Steep narrow runway with dog legs. This got a dog leg as well. That's very nice. Usage limited to highly experienced mountain pilots. Uh, a lot of lot of details. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, these books, Fly Idaho. Is what they're called. Uh, there's also fly. Um, uh, what is it called? I have it right here. It's. Let me see if I can pull it out. I'm kind of stuck here. Fly Utah. Basically the same concept. Two volumes, ground section, and all of this. Uh, the um, author is Galen L. Hanselman. G A L E N L. Hanselman. Um, you'll find it if you just search for Fly Idaho or Fly Utah. Good for just reading. Uh, I mean, there are so many cool stories from these airports. Uh, so just fun, fun reading. And uh, yeah, exactly. Um, these these books are made small because they want people to be able to carry them in their planes. Uh, but they're just. Uh, Good reading material just for fun even if you don't plan to go there it's just uh, just just cute it's nice and uh, a lot of cool stories about the local people who live there and the people who built the airfields and uh, stories that has nothing to, to, to do with flying even They're just uh, just a nice texture um, I'll guarantee you if uh, and David you, you probably like this if uh, um, if with Explain 12 and some good ortho and, uh, for example, this X America uh, thing, if that kind of is good enough to be able to do uh, something like uh, a true bush run uh, navigation, uh, then I'm sure that there will be um, an ABC challenge in, uh, in Idaho before long, because Idaho is kind of the classic for uh, as far as bush uh, flying has gone. But uh, I haven't felt like doing very detailed flying outside of the true earth environments because I don't find I haven't been happy with the overlays. The uh, ortho can be fine, but the overlays are usually so horrific that uh, and so lacking, as you see, you know, bald spots, uh, you know, where there should be forest. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, maybe doesn't doesn't explain uh, couldn't you get. Um, uh, add-on um, mesh uh, to, to, uh, to work that out uh, should, be, should be possible I guess so but that, that would uh, really I would really love to be able to be able to do that because then I could really make use of these uh, not necessarily for the challenge itself though because many of these don't have IKO codes probably none of them actually but they would be included in the package because uh, uh, one of the things I've felt with the Oregon challenge is that there are so many cool airfields in between that should have been included as kind of bonus 
uh, fields to land at uh, for those who are, are inclined to do that so you could uh, you could have the um, uh, enjoyment of seeing people fly from point A to B to C to D in straight lines while others do this uh, like some of us are doing the zigzag like a fly trying to get out of the house anyway um, let's get this shut down yeah uh, I haven't done a lot of research I have this research here uh, but I think of uh, the, the most likely ABC challenge to happen first is Washington uh, because it's um, it's already been uh, not extensively researched but it already has a very good baseline of research uh, or one of the uh, CALs so uh, I think that it's uh, very plausible that there will be a NorCal bush challenge and a SoCal bush challenge because there's so much in California so you couldn't, couldn't have one California and also it would kind of uh, um, be better to to have one uh, California bush challenge for uh, the uh, western US uh, pilot edge and uh, one for uh, ZLA only uh, so that's my think that's my thinking uh, that's uh, very likely but I think Washington is probably uh, the most likely to come first and then one of the one of the cals and uh, but if there's a, if there's a good chance of getting a good um, combination of scenery to make Idaho uh, possible uh, I think that's uh, yeah, exactly. They're so slow that uh, that's one of the things uh, uh, Gareth and I spent a lot of time on uh, for the uh, uh, Idaho, uh, the Oregon challenge. Um, we had to leave out a huge number of fields because we had made ourselves some restrictions as far as how long the legs can be. We had we have a few exceptions, uh, but uh, in general, we tried to make the legs uh, short so that. Um, 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 so that none of the legs would be as long as, for example, the Western U.S. Uh, ABC. I'll tell you that uh, the Western U.S. US uh, ABC took me a long time because I flew it in a Cessna 172. Um, and I also didn't fly direct for most of the routes, so that took a long time. I particularly remember one leg that came from, uh, from Colorado or something that had to go all the way into... Uh, at least West Arizona, or a uh, oh, good grief, which leg was, was that in uh, Oregon? It took two, uh, three, four hours. I mean, I that was my average, but I didn't, I didn't go direct. But I guess probably neither did you. Uh, but yeah, we we spent a lot of time trying to uh, to compress uh, the, uh, the challenge so that it, that the total length is actually quite low. Um, but there were some compromises because we wanted, for example, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, which was this? Um, uh, the leg going to uh, Riverview Airport. Let's see, what is that? Uh, the one before that. Uh, quail to yeah, that's uh, that is a pretty long leg. That was the one you talked about. Uh, th that took uh, three to four hours. Or was that just you? Uh... Yeah, we did that because quail was the only one we could find that was a queue, and Riverview was that was locked. We had to have Riverview. We could have found an R field close by. We actually did find one that was fantastic. But Riverview was kind of one of those we had set a pin in. We have to have this one. Calvert Peak, for example, that was... We have to have that as uh, the one. Even though it, Cal, uh, Calvert Peak was actually t a bit too close to the B airport, um, back acres. So we tried to find a B airport that was further away. But at the same time, we wanted a B airport that was... Um, uh, uh, 
not too far away from the A airport from Aubrey Mountain, where I'm right now, or close to. And also, at the same time, we wanted the field number two to be easy. Uh, and Backacres is a very easy uh, bush field. Um, so we did some thinking about how we wanted to structure the whole uh, setup. I mean, this is different from the uh, from the others who make uh, bush challenge or the um, ABC challenge based on just uh, find a you know a decent airport where people can land their uh, TBMs and uh, their small jets and uh, their uh, twins. Uh, we try to aim for a kind of a progression in uh, difficulty. And uh, while Calvert Peak is difficult, it's not one. It's not the diff most difficult ones. Um, and we also tried to uh, avoid going from one end of Oregon to the other. We tried to kind of stay in the region and move kind of gradually. But Quail to Review is one of the exceptions we just had to do. So I can tell you we spent a lot of time on that. Um, and we changed uh, some of them even after we had decided we had locked them and then we he started modeling and we thought well this doesn't feel right and then we changed it I know I know it's it's uh, uh, I think it panned out nicely but uh, we had to do some compromises so and uh, especially if you want to have the uh, adventure of actually uh, looking around a little bit, um, uh, it will take a lot, quite a bit of time. I mean, the the least adventurous air, uh, leg is, of course, uh, uh, flying. Uh, what is it? Flying K Ranch, or what is it called? Uh, flying like fly JLA to K Bar that you know 500 feet leg um, but that would we, we did that because we could and because people were joking about flying IFR in uh, the uh, Washington challenge uh, that's um, crosswinds to uh, to Deer Park leg in uh, Washington uh, ABC Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's how we try to uh, to think about uh, Washington as well. Um, Gareth has had a, b a bit of problems lately, lately because uh, they have uh, some uh, power shortage in uh, where he lives, so he's not able to uh, to uh, to trust that he has power to fire up his computers and all of his uh, his stuff at his office uh, at home to uh, to be able to go flying much so uh, that's why he hasn't been around lately so um, if, uh, if if I if I have to I will do the whole thing myself uh, modeling the airports and uh, writing the note time because I'm I'm basically at least able to to make the airports I think he's still the master but uh, if it has to be well I then I'll do it One of the things I would like to do is to go uh, refly the uh, Oregon Challenge uh, in uh, the uh, new uh, uh, Cessna Stationer uh, by uh, Thranda. I just want to have a rep package for it first because uh, I'm spending a lot of time in a plane that is not uh, um, uh, persistent between flights kind of bores me a little bit. I want the plane to be uh, kind of changing with my flying. Yeah, well, uh, we didn't fix any mesh on any of the airports uh, because it uh, kind of, uh, if there's a report, uh, I've, I have a good feeling about that. Uh, it should be very easy for them to uh, to crank out an, a rep for that plane. It's uh, it's um, it's basically a 210, just less complex, and without the uh, turbo, which is a shame, by the way. I would like uh, to have a turbo on that thing. Uh, not for the, um, not for the, um, not for the ABC airports, because that would uh, that would mean that he would uh, have to 
um, he fixed some of the meshes for uh, um, uh, for us probably. Uh, but uh, the thing with uh, with changing the mesh for Orbex, for example, needs to, needs for uh, for uh, the um, uh, that mesh file to go into the Orbex uh, catalog. It doesn't override uh, by the airport itself. And uh, the organ package is kind of it, it's not uh, completely. Uh, um, agnostic as to what base package you have or none because it basically works in uh, without uh, uh, it, it works without uh, the, uh, the true earth uh, with uh, you know a few exceptions I guess uh, we, we didn't mess around with with uh, testing it because it's not mandatory to have the um, scenery um, and we stated pretty clearly, I think, in the uh, README material and the um, manual that uh, it is created with the True Earth in mind. So that's kind of taken as a baseline. Um, but it, it couldn't include any meshes because uh, that would uh, require extra testing. And uh, we didn't create any airports that, that would uh, require that. Uh, and I don't think actually he started messing with uh, meshes before uh, we started the challenge. I think we flew around the challenge and then when we stumbled across airports that he wanted to fix up because we couldn't land. Uh, not part of the challenge, but you know, in between, uh, he would do that. Uh, that work looks way too complex for me. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I have no idea how to do that, but uh, you know, Plopping down stuff at an airport in Ortho and uh, making that look nice, I can do that very easily. So uh, if the Idaho, for example, is uh, has an airport that is completely uh, off, I think that would just rule it out completely, unless we were able to find um, uh, some add-on um, uh, mesh that would uh, work with that. But I, I, you know, I'm, it seems like in uh, X point twelve this should be easier, because in general it's able to uh, to line things up better, with the exception of uh, you know a few things like uh, Winkle Barn. So uh, I would at least hope that would be the case, because uh, I think regardless, uh, I I wouldn't do any of this in X point eleven. I would wait for twelve to be stable enough to be. Uh, uh, workable, and I would, you know, move the whole thing over there. So, anyway, I'm gonna start shutting down here. Oh, nasty! I've been sitting here with my landing light and the uh, strobe sound. That is bad. A new wed. Oh, yeah, interesting. Do you have any information about that, or just, or have they just said that there will be a new wed? here okay okay so, so i wouldn't be able to uh to go into work at 12 anyway yeah okay all right that's off and uh off with that Okay, Technic technical technically I could. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, I see. It would be uh, uh um, basically uh, so it would be like uh, making an airport for eleven, and then importing it into into twelve. It would kind of be the same result probably. Or is it completely reworked from ground up, this whole program? Walk around. Post-flight. Now look at this. 
I didn't burst any tires. Um, kind of disappointed about that. Well, this looks a bit weird. Probably because the plane is leaning to the side here. Pitted cover. Tie down. Finish. Okay. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little... I have a stream deck with a button that takes me to the landing rate. Uh, log. This is an uh, interesting log because uh, it has data back to December of 2020 for all the planes I fly, not not just the Beaver, but uh, you know mainly the Beaver. The landing rates in the beginning you can see was uh, not that great. They're you know, in the 200s. I was very happy with uh, 100. 500, really nasty stuff. It's not that often that happens anymore. Not my best landing, I would say. 2,600 feet per uh, per minute at 132 knots. Well. Uh... It depends on what you're thinking about. Why are they wrong? Yeah, the the uh, the, uh, the loading. I I don't I don't care about those numbers at all. But the speeds and uh, the um, um, uh, the vertical speeds and the, the uh, ground speed uh, checks out uh, with what I'm seeing when I'm flying. And um, this is a bad one, for example. Okay, butter in the child. Okay. Maybe they uh, work only on a couple of, uh, or uh, on a you know a certain number of planes. But uh, this one was good. What is this? 417,464 feet per second in a Cessna 172. That's interesting, isn't it? Minus 21 for speed. Uh, how do you uh, how do you even 400,000 feet? Uh, what is that even? Uh, 5,000 feet is that's one mile, isn't it? So. That's uh, I, I'd say that wouldn't destroy the nose gear at least, wouldn't you? Anyway, for today, let me see. So let's just uh, check that. So this is today's crop. One hundred seventy-seven, one hundred seventy-eight, three hundred. Okay, so that was a not that good, but the speeds are quite low, and th that's kind of also what I'm uh, aiming for. I'm trying to uh, to uh, get those speeds down. I had one miraculous. Uh, I I when I went into uh, uh, Wrecked at 300. But which uh, which program is this? Yeah, 300 isn't uh, isn't a problem at all. Uh, 17 I had uh, earlier last week at Hilltop of all airports.
Well, anyway. Uh, what is it called? Does it have a name, this thing I'm using here? Uh, I don't think it's even a separate plugin. I think it's a uh, Lua script that I'm using. I had a plugin earlier um, that didn't uh, that seemed seemed to be off. It might be the same that one that you used. Uh, it, it was one I found at the org. Um, okay, well, maybe the other one was a Lua script as well. But I, I seem to remember the one I used previously that I didn't like. Uh, that seemed off. Uh, it populated in uh, this menu here, and I, I don't see this one here. It's it's probably in some, in, in the uh, Lua script there somewhere. By the way, speaking of Lua scripts, uh, I have this this one here. Have you seen this one? Portable oxygen. Let's see if can this be resized. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Uh, doesn't seem to be working uh, because if I turn the oxygen on. Uh, let, let me add some content to it and uh, turn, turn it off and uh, let's just see I have four masks turn it on it doesn't change well actually now it's, go, it's going down that's interesting Uh, but I'm not sure if so. Maybe that is changing. But uh, but uh, I've checked towards the data refs uh, as far as uh, hypoxia goes, and that did that didn't change. So I'm not sure it, that it's actually working. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I, I've had this plugin for a long time, and I, I tried I tried using it, but I think it didn't change uh, um, uh, the the hypoxia uh, data ref. So I I just you know I could use it for for um, the immersion, but uh, if it doesn't really do anything, it's kind of uh, a little bit uh, just irritating. Uh, but I will, I will check because I I don't remember it has had any flow, so I need to just uh, check that out because uh, if it if it actually works now, for example, or something has changed, um, that would be cool. Because uh, sometimes it's I don't like flying that high uh, without having oxygen, so I try to just uh, keep it within uh, thirty minutes if I need to go beyond uh, twelve five. Anyways, uh, two thirty in the morning here in Norway. So, uh, uh, good thing I uh, have work that starts very late, so I can uh, sleep in. So I need some food, and I'll go uh, sleep. Loads and empty. Okay. So it punctures on its way down. Anyway. Thanks for watching, all of you who are still around, uh, and uh, thanks for the help with uh, explaining skids and slips. And uh, I'm not sure if I still remember it, but now I at least have an understanding uh, that it's uh, of what it is. And uh, thanks for the help with the AOA. I'm definitely going to try to pay attention to it now because uh, at least I have a functioning. Uh, baseline understanding of how it works. Kind of strange that it took took me so long before. Uh... Yeah, well, let's uh, spend some time in the air uh, working on the slips and skits and uh, see if I can uh, figure that out. Yeah, excellent. I'd uh, I'd uh, I'd like to see that. And um, uh, yeah, there's other things like basic air work that. Um, uh, if someone has any good ideas for something to try out in the beaver, I'm uh, I'm all for it. And I I apparently have things to learn. So so, but uh, it was a good practice session, and uh, I call it a win for uh, for wheel landings. But I mean, I haven't had proper uh, uh, 
crosswind, so that needs to be done. So maybe uh, the next flight I'll uh, go somewhere and hunt out a uh, good uh, crosswind. Anyway, good night and uh, good luck. See ya.